What's up guys, Matacaster here, and today we are doing some retro gaming in B-17, Flying Fortress, the Mighty 8th. This game came out in 2000, so pretty much 19 years ago. Pretty impressive, because if you haven't played this game, you're going to be surprised by how in-depth and how much fun this game actually is. Yeah, the graphics aren't really up to snuff, but it's the gameplay that makes it so good. I'm a big World War II fan. Um, I always been a, uh, very interested in it, and so all these games, uh, back when I was younger, I used to play these World War II games all the time, and I wanted to revisit this one because it's been a long, long time since I've played it, and I figure, hey, why not bring you guys along? So here we are at the main screen, and uh, we go into making a new game. We'll probably do like a just a, a quick training mission. Here's uh, some options you can do to play a historical campaign, which is what we're going to end up doing, because I think I'd like to make a series out of, out of this game. And then play a squadron campaign. That's where you're basically in charge of a full squadron of B-17s, whereas in historical campaign, you're pretty much just in charge of your plane. And then we've got a quick start mission, which they have uh, historical, yeah, like limping home and stuff like that that you can play, which are fun. Training missions, and then choose a historical mission. Uh, with the training mission, we're just going to jump in here. Uh, we don't need to worry about taxi and takeoff and approach and landing and things like that. We're just going to jump into bombing. And I'll show you guys how the bombing works in this. And it's... Uh, Pretty cool, actually. So this is going to be bombing in good conditions. All right, let's go. Join formation. Your new heading is 186. Repeat, 186. So essentially, okay. what we're doing here is we're on the bomb run. This is the Norden bomb site. We'll get an outside view of the plane here. And it's uh, silver, B-17, late war, uh, B-17D, or G, possibly. Looks like we're in the clouds a little bit. Let's get back into the plane and then enter the bomb site mode here if it'll let me. There we go. And now we're in the bomb site mode. We're probably a little far away from the target. You can check that by going to the navigator station and opening up the map. And here we are. So here's our plane. And we're about to make a turn and get ready to go on the bomb run. And then our where we drop our bombs is right here, indicated by that little bomb. How about that? So probably going to speed up time and get us close, and then we'll just do the bomb run. All right, so we just called for bomb bays full open where you are in the clouds. Maybe we can, yep, there's the bomb doors open. You see our little bombs in there? We can. It makes it a lot harder when it's uh, we're in the clouds like this. So we are on the bombing run and just waiting to see the target come up. The nice thing is, is this game does have a speed up time and it's quite effective. I'm starting to see the, the, the circle, the ring that we'll be bombing into. There's a little building in the middle of that. We're going to be looking for that here shortly. The draw distance on this game is not that great, uh, especially when you're kind of in the clouds and we're drifting to the left a little bit, which can be solved. See if get to regular time here. Can be solved here with this little guy. Try to compensate the drift. Just move it a little over. Hopefully, oh, maybe not. It's so sensitive. <laughs> it just makes such big adjustments. All right, let's see what that did for us. So what I'm gonna do now is hit Control K on my keyboard. And that enters me into where I can kind of adjust the site where I want it to. And then by hitting control or shift K, I'm sorry, shift K, by hitting shift K again, it locks it back down. Now over here on the right side, you see two tabs. This, uh, this one down here is slowly moving forward. Just imagine that as the target. And this one is just my adjustments up and down to keep the target in the crosshairs of the bomb site. When these two meet, that automatically drops the bomb. This is the Norden bomb site. It was a pretty amazing bomb site back in the day. This is obviously a simple, simplified version of it for for the game's sake, but there is a lot you can do with it that is very accurate, surprisingly. So what I'll do is just kind of work with this. Um, I'm starting to see the building in the middle. 
of the target there. So I'll shift K again and kind of adjust, adjust back to that. And what I'm actually doing in the way this actually worked in World War II is that the bombardier actually takes over flying the plane from the pilots. The pilot hands the plane over the bombardier and then he takes over and that's basically flying it through the bomb site. Looks like we're drifting a little bit more. I'm going to go back here and try to adjust this a little bit, see what that does. Try to get this target in the crosshairs. Lock it down. And as you can see now, over here on the right, this one's starting to move forward. Like I said, when these two meet, bombs will automatically drop. Okay, as you can see, we're getting pretty close. Now I'm just trying to keep these crosshairs on the target. We're drifting a little bit, and I'm trying to make up for it here and there. One more adjustment, maybe. Get that locked down right there. And then from there, we just work to keep. Now we're drifting again. That's the thing, is uh, I can go back and adjust that but we're getting so close that I'll just do it manually here. As you can see they're coming into frame, coming into picture. I'm going to try to put these bombs somewhat in the middle, try to destroy as much of these two buildings as we can. And as you look over here to the right, that little... There we go. Try to adjust this down. This is where we're trying to keep the thing in focus. Keep it right in the middle of the crosshairs. And here it comes. It's drifting a little at the last minute, but it's too late. Here they come. They're about to touch. And it's going to signal the bomb release right there. And from here, we can hit F6 and watch the bombs as they fall. And then we can even have a kind of a zoom in on the target. Now we're going to be a little off just from that drifting that we had, but looks like we're going to be pretty clear. Yep, we got it. Pretty much what you call a direct hit. And that is bombing in perfect conditions without flak and fighters and really that much clouds and a whole lot of wind. Okay, so here we are in the debrief. We can read the... Uh, the debrief here, uh, bombing, good conditions. Congratulations, you have displayed the required standard of competence and familiarity with the procedures for using the Norden bomb site. You have completed this training mission successfully. Beautiful. All right. That is bombing training under good conditions. Let's now move into setting up a historical campaign. So here we get to choose the 1st Bombardment Division of the 8th Air Force. Uh, you can choose the uh, 401st, 306th, 381st, 92nd. They just have different logos. It's all really the, uh, it, it all starts pretty much uh, the, the end of the, close to the end of the war, December 1st, 43. We can go earlier. Let's start March 1st, 1944. We'll do the, I like the 401st because I really dig that. The squadrons have different, Different logos for them as well. I really dig that. I think that looks cool. March 1st of 44. Let's do it. Now here's where we get to choose our nose art for our bomber. They have uh, some pretty good ones. They actually look uh, pretty authentic to the time with that kind of artwork. The girls are always cool. I like these ones with like the bombs on them. Those are cool too. And then there's even ones where they combine the girl and a bomb. Such as that. Well, that one's weird. It's kind of like a, a Memphis Belle-ish knockoff, I would say. All right, I'm kind of digging on this uh, bomb girl here. Let's go, let's name it. Let's go with Dakota Demon. That actually was a bomber in World War II. This is our crew. We can uh, replace the entire crew if we want to, but I don't see a need. Uh, we got crazy eyes down here. <laughs> wow. Yep. That works. 
And now we're uh, greeted with the corridor, I believe they call it. And then uh, we can go in here to the bomber command office and basically look at the bomber information file. Serial number, missions flown, enemy kills, mechanical status. Yeah, there's really nothing there. We can go into the crew information file. We can see that Paul Whitley here, he was born in 1917. He's married. His aircraft is the Dakota Demon. He's uh, the bomber, bombardier. Uh, his gunnery is average. Piloting poor bomb aiming above average. Hence how he got the job. His morale is low. But once we start doing pretty well, if we do well, if he doesn't get hurt, because um, you can end up in this medical file over here with people that are recovering and you get, yeah, it's, again, it gets really in depth. We can go out here and inspect the bomber. Might as well. And you just basically look, look around at the bomber and whatnot. We can zoom in here and see our nose art. Very cool. And over here are the doors. These are off limits. This is operations room and the squadron commander's room, which those would be open if we were a squadron commander. Maybe in the future we will have to do that. But for now, what is available to us is that um, bomb commander's office and the briefing room. Let's go in there and let's get the information on our first mission. We'll take a look at the map first. We can see that we are going... Well, this looks like a pretty long trip for our first trip. Uh, not too bad. It doesn't look like uh, we're going to encounter a whole lot of these uh, red areas or flak, where there is known flak uh, that could hit us. Doesn't doesn't look like it's real populated over here, so maybe we, we will get away with uh, not many fighters and hopefully not very much flak. Okay, so now we leave the map and take a look at the mission briefing here. Okay, so primary target is Brest Harbor. Secondary target, Brest U-Boat Base. We've got our ordnance selected, which is our bombs. Six 500-pound bombs, 1,200-pound incendiary bombs. Distance to furthest target, 795 miles. We do have a fighter squadron of two squadrons of P-47 Thunderbolts. That's cool. Primary target, there's information here. Fighter strength, minimal, priority high. Uh, flak strength is moderate. Target intel, so it says damage none, which means it has not been bombed. In a while, at least. It's working at, uh, you know, full capacity, I suppose. Target intelligence. Brest Harbor is used to transport some materials and personnel important to the German war effort in that local area. Striking the port would disrupt communications and supply, as well as affecting local morale and support for the Germans. And we might as well just take a quick look at the secondary. I don't see why we'd need to switch to the secondary, but in case we have to. And there is no territory target, so we'll sign off on this. We'll take a look at the film reel of the target. And this just helps kind of familiarize yourself, know what you're looking for once you're looking through the, uh, the, the bomb site. And we can see it pretty clearly there. So this would be the harbor, and this would be the... the operations area. I think we're going to just aim for this area here as much as we can. So, you know, you saw a big big square, rectangle build. You just kind of picture that. Put that in your brain. Let's go start the mission. So we're, we're greeted with the B-17. Standing outside of it, we can press F1 to get inside the plane. What we'll do is we'll go back here to the operator or the radio operator's area. Click on him, Mariano Cavanaugh. Go to the instrument view. He's got a book here. We're going to go ahead and tell the pilot. Start engines. Just like that. Master switch on. So what he's going to do is start getting the plane Down ready left, to go. Open left, open right. And we'll hang out for at least one engine, engine one engine start up here. It's pretty cool actually. Booster pumps on. Energizing. Meshing. Master switch on. There you go. And as you can see over here, we've got our other bombers Make doing the same thing, ready. getting ready for the mission. Booster pumps on. Alrighty, we're getting ready for the takeoff. Now, what you can 
go through the startup sequence and taxi and all that stuff if you want to. Otherwise, if you don't, the pilot will just do it automatically, which is kind of nice. And you see that even though for almost a 20-year-old game, once he starts getting ready for takeoff, you'll see him drop the flaps, the split flaps, and get the plane ready to go. Looks like we're the first ones out, too. You are cleared for takeoff. You got the clear for takeoff. You see the flaps come down. Full power on. Man, these B-17s are gorgeous. Even in this pixelated 20-year-old game. <laughs> And there we go. You got the ball turret gunner down there. He wouldn't be in there at this point, but that's where he hangs out. Gear up. And you see the flaps starting to close. Very cool. So basically what we're going to do now is orbit the airfield. I've got time skip going on or time time speed up going. But orbit the airfield, allow the other planes to take off, and we'll slowly get into formation as we're climbing. There's one right there. Here comes a third bomber here getting into position. You can see the dot of a fourth one coming up way back there. And I'm just going to go ahead and skip to when we're all in formation. All right, we're all in formation. And for some reason, this it's something to do with the... Uh, you'll see that every now and then, smoke coming out of the engines like that. I think it has to do with... I don't remember doing it in the original game, but I think it has to do with the emulator. It just does that every once in a while. Everybody's fine. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much in formation at a low level or low altitude, and we'll just climb from here. We're just picking up our heading to get to the target. Now, another thing you can do, you can look at and even fly the fighters that will be accompanying us on our mission. These right here, P-47 Thunderbolts. I think yeah, we have two squadrons of those, and one's getting ready to take off now and they will join our formation. Let's jump back in the plane here and go to the navigator station right here and take a look at his map and see where we're at. So we zoom out a little bit, you can see we got a long way to go. And time skip is wonderful in this game. You just hit enter. You see where our plane is now? You just hit enter. Well, it says the group of aircraft is leaving the formation, probably fighters. We're getting a new round of fighters, so we'll just skip, and it just skips right ahead like that. Yep, we got the French coast. We'll skip ahead again, see how far we get. Uh, pretty far. Yeah, so you don't have to actually sit here and twiddle your thumbs while you're waiting for this to go down. And we're pretty much on the bomb run. You're on the bomb run. All right, it's official. We're on the bomb run. We're going to make our turn towards the target. Check that out, the bomb doors being open. There they are, much clearer now. Very cool. Okay, we're getting hit by flak. Show you that. Getting hit pretty good. And we're dealing with a lot of cloud cover. Ah, there it is. There's a break in the cloud cover. I'm gonna take over. Hit shift K, get this thing where I want it for the time being. Thinking right about there for now. Right there. And we are drifting. Let's try to correct for that. Oh, we got a fire in the nose. I can't really take care of that right now. Let's 
see if that helped our drifting issue. Kind of line back up a little bit here. And yes, it does. It has has helped it out. We've got a little ways to go, so I will actually take care of that fire. I'll get the uh, navigator on it. Put that fire out. You can see we got hit by flak right here. Pretty hard. Grab that fire extinguisher, buddy. There he goes. All right, I'll let him do that. Fire out. Need to get back on. Okay, fire out already. All right, let's adjust our sight a little bit. Get something more along the lines of maybe right there. Man, that one was right in the sight. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. I know that one building off to the right is very tempting just because it's so big, but you know, I want to hit more in the middle of this this harbor here. Maybe make another little adjustment here. Something like that. Beautiful. And we're starting to drift a little. And the winds can change. And you can be stuck dealing with that. But as close as we are, I'm not going to pull out and deal with it. I'll just do it manually. Another piece of flak right, right in the eye. Actually, I'm going to push it forward a little. Oh, sounds like somebody got hit. Don't have time for that right now. We'll get to that once the bombs are gone. One more adjustment, because the drifting is getting bad. I think we're just going to have to call that good. It's looking good. Nope, one more, one more. I lied. There we go. Light adjustment at the last minute. Fire in the tail. Fire in the tail. Bombs away. That's a lot of bombs. From every one of our planes. Let's get down here and take a look. Yeah, I know there's a fire in the tail. I should be on that. But this, this is just too fun. You can actually hear the sirens, the air raid sirens going off. Yeah, that looks like a good hit. Pretty much leveled all that. Left a couple buildings there, but that's that's pretty good. All right, back to our situation. They said there was a fire in the tail. Is it in here? Let's see, let's get one of these guys on it. Maybe it went out already. Nope, still somewhere around here. I don't need them on the gun right now because there's no fighters because there's flak. Uh, Germans or, you know, enemy fighters won't fly into their own flak typically. Where's he going? Did he go that way? Yeah, back here somewhere. Yeah, there's a big chunk out of the plane right there. See how everybody's doing. Not too bad. These guys with like the ghost face on them right there means they're kind of freaked out right now and possibly could be injured. But we will find out once they kind of do a self assessment and let us know. Nobody's slumped over or anything. Okay, let's take another look at the map, see where we're at. Still in this flak range, but but after we're you know out of here, it's a pretty pretty simple drive home, easy enough. Okay, we do have an injured crew member here that just popped up. Let's get 
over here. Yeah, he's slumped over, not doing too good. And we'll get our navigator on it. Form, for medical aid on your bombardier. He's just going to tend to him for a while. And when it gets really crazy is when you've got several crew members hurt. When you get really good flak, really accurate flak, or really, really heavy flak, or even fighters. Uh, you get a lot of, it's a lot of crew management. And take them, you don't want to take guys off guns, and but if you leave them there slumped over too long, then they can die, bleed out and such. So that's where the strategy, there's strategy that comes into play. That's a lot of fun. You're going to see a lot more of that as we go deeper into this uh, playthrough. So we're gonna try to at least uh, at least do all 25 missions. Okay, he's all patched up. So he's good. And we are currently. Let's check in with our navigator here. We are currently. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Pretty much out of harm's way, unless there's a gonna be a formation of fighter scramble which there shouldn't be and I think we still have an escort I'll double check yeah we've still got an escort of two p47s so I think we're good wonder where they're at wonder if they've joined back up with us usually oh look down there you can see the uh, harbor on fire uh, usually the fighters will stay away when there's flak yeah they're way out there uh, they'll come back in here shortly, but they'll stay away when there's flak because there's no reason to send fighters, escort fighters through flak with you. They just go, go away from it. You look at this B-17 down here; it's really shot up with flak. Ours doesn't look too bad. Uh, we got it in the tail pretty good. I'm not seeing a whole lot more. That's awful. Yeah, and there's the other escort group out there. Here come the little friends for a nice flyover. Looks like they might have lost one. Oh, we got another guy hurt. Who do we have? We have the navigator. Now it's your turn, buddy. Pay the favor. Pay it forward. You saw the bomber make a hard turn, it means we hit our waypoint. And pretty much, I believe, a straight shot home from here. Once we get our navigator back up and running, we'll check his map. Looks like he's going to be just fine. So, yep, we're pretty much ready for time skipping home. Oh, some. <laughs> we got a tail gunner. Tail gunner not doing so good. Let's jump to the back of the plane here and send one of our gunners back there to patch him up. Yeah, that flak will really mess up a plane and its crew members, that's for sure. And basically, if you don't know what flak is, it's a, it's a shell that the Germans would shoot up into the air and they could preset the altitude at which they want it to explode. And when it explodes, it just shoots shrapnel. And just huge bits of shrapnel that just do basically this over here, rip a plane apart. Alrighty, he's gonna be good. I've got a log back there. Even old crazy eyes. Looks like he's doing alright. Oh, we got two sets of crazy. We got twin crazy eyes.
Got another guy hurt. This is like uh, time released shrapnel damage. Because we're still flying over. We're almost home, just about. Let me double check. Now yeah, we're about to the mainland here. I'll zoom out. And we've got quite a ways to go. And this green line here, it's green if it means you got enough gas to get home, amber if it's going to be close, and red if you're not going to make it. So you can plan if you if you got like a, if you got your wing hit and it pierced the tank and you're leaking fuel. First, you can go in and change, uh, try to put some fuel into the other wing, uh, some of the fuel from the damaged wing into the good wing, and try to save as much fuel as you can there. If not, then you have to plan your uh, bailout and where you want to do it. If you bail out, you know, within enemy lines, uh, there's a good chance you could get caught, and then pretty much the game's over. <laughs> you gotta start again. Uh, but if you bail out close to the mainland, or even over the mainland, then uh, you're good. You just lose your bomber, basically. Sounds like he's gonna be A-OK. -okay. okay, looks like we're leaving the formation. We are getting close to our base. We've got a few planes leaving the formation, probably the planes that are stationed. Man, that one really got hit up by flak really bad. Um, the ones that are staying at our base. Yep. There's our there's our order to orbit the be orbit the base and wait for clearance to land. All right, we got our clearance to land, geared down, flaps down, approaching the airfield. Power on, little flare, maybe. Three point touchdown, how about that? It's crazy to think these kids that flew these planes were 18, 19 years old. These things are just unbelievable. And from here, we'll just taxi back to uh, our little pad and go through a shutdown sequence. And then we'll get our briefing, which I'm excited to see how we did. Good landing. Taxi to heart stand. Stop engines. Booster pumped off. Basically what we're gonna do here is go through our shutdown sequence of each engine. Turbos off. And I'll wait to see at least one shutdown for you. Mixer idle cut off. Pretty cool. Down to the last engine. And there it goes. All right, time for our mission briefing. Let's take a look at the the um, footage of after we came in and did what we did. The post bombing footage, which we already know, we hit it pretty good. And you can see all these buildings are destroyed, and through here, a little bit of cloud cover when they filmed this. Yeah, we know we hit it. That much we know. And time to read the briefing. Debriefing, that is. Debriefing summary. Target attack. Breast Harbor. Distance flown 871 miles. Bombers lost or missing zero. Enemy fighter shot down zero. Bomb damage estimate high. So we did do quite a bit of damage. Uh, the best you can get is totally destroyed. But uh, that's only when you pretty much totally destroy it. Let's look at uh, what we got as far as crew injuries suffered. We've got uh, we've got Staff Sergeant Russell, this Tron Troberg Troberg Mercier. I'm gonna stop trying to pronounce these. Uh, that one I can do. Shave. So that's uh, about four guys there. So we're gonna have to take a look at the medical. Yeah, see, well, our bomb pattern wasn't too bad. We did pretty good. So we got four Purple Heart recipients, and we can go out here, take a look at our medical file, and get a better idea of how badly they're hurt and how long they're gonna be out. All right, so we got Rob here, who is injured. 
And he is going to be out. Expected discharge date will be the 15th, so he's going to be out for about two weeks. Uh, we've got Jack Shave here. And he, again, another 15th, so he's out for two weeks. We've got Balter at Gunner. And he's going to be out until the 22nd. So we're going to be flying with the uh, four guys we're not familiar with yet. These guys aren't real familiar with each other yet. And another guy coming back on the 22nd. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of B-17 Flying Fortress, the Mighty Eighth. We're going to do the next uh, mission. Um, hopefully, we'll have some fighters and we'll see some gunning and shooting them down. Uh, if you made it this far, please give it a like thumbs up i definitely appreciate it and it helps out the channel and if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing i definitely appreciate that too guys thank you so much and as always i'll see you in the next one